Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Cody here. Uh, today we're going to be doing another league logo ranking video, which I'm really excited about. Today we're going to be doing another independent collegiate league with the Frontier League. This one comes to us courtesy of Colin by request. Been wanting to do this one for a little while, um, but it wasn't until Colin's comment that I decided to go ahead and pull the trigger on it. So. Thank you, Colin, appreciate you. As requested, here's the Frontier League. It's been a pretty hectic last couple weeks here in San Antonio with the mission season starting back up. Super excited about it though, when I'm not working at the ballpark, I'm at the ballpark regardless, uh, taking in the ambiance and enjoying the games for what they are, because it's a beautiful stadium and I love working for them. Uh, that's why I'm actually representing my work gear tonight. I'll be working the replay uh, up in the booth, so I'm really excited about that. So let's go ahead and get into it. We have 16 teams in the Frontier League. And I'm gonna start with what I consider to be the worst, and then we're gonna get to what I consider the first, worst of first. That's gonna start us off today with the New York Boulders. I do not have a lot of good things to say about this. This is really boring and basic. To me, that's what that B stands for, those two B words. The textures on this are really weird. That baseball looks like it's made out of paper mache or something, and it's very interesting. Lame overall. Sorry, New York, throw you under the bus like that. This is probably the only logo that I actively dislike in this league because the rest of them are really good. But with this next one, 15, this Quebec Capitals, I don't really know how to, <laughs> I really had the French accent on there because I don't speak French. This isn't bad because the colors are, are pretty nice and this is kind of a standard baseball looking script. Uh, it's just a little boring, which is really the only thing that, that kind of sets it back. In fact, I ran into this really cool thread here. Someone had requested making a 1950s style Quebec Capitals logo and this guy, Texas Ranger, commented these beautiful, gorgeous logos and I gotta say, I'm like, I just wanna, I just wanna pretend that this is Quebec's logo and not the boring, lame script that they have. Um, that would make me sleep a lot better at night. But I already just love the fact that this exists. So, um, big shout out to Texas Ranger for designing these. I really wish this was a thing. And by that same energy, with just having a kind of generic script for your logo, I gotta go next with the Florence Yalls. This is probably one of the most interesting and unique baseball team names uh, that exist currently. And to have this as the logo is very underwhelming. That said, the colors look great and the baseball inside that Y um, look pretty nice, but overall just kind of whatever. Also, I don't know if you can hear that in the background. They're doing construction at the apartment uh, next to mine. And it's during the day, it's kind of annoying, but I just kind of drown it out with some music. But uh, as I'm recording this, I'm realizing that that constant buzz is just sort of not going away. So I do apologize if you hear any of that in the background doing my best to talk about a logo in between takes of whatever it is they're drilling. All right, at number 13, I've got the Lake Erie Crushers. This is pretty nice as far as like the balance, um, but it's just, it just feels very, very text heavy. And the expression on the grape guy is sort of dopey. Don't be hating on me for ranking this so low because as I'm looking at it, I find myself with not a whole lot of negative to say about it. It's just not really my favorite at all. It looks just a little too cartoony and amateur. Um, compared to some of the other ones in this league. I do like his black curly hair is popping out of his hat, um, but short black curlies uh, historically are not something you really want to see. Next up, I've got the Empire State Grays. This is a logo I had mentioned previously um, when I was talking about the Empire League, which the Empire League and the Frontier League kind of have a unique relationship with this team specifically. It's a little confusing and kind of muddy. The fact remains that this team plays in this league. This isn't a bad logo at all. In fact, it's it's pretty good. There's just a few things that are really just bugging me on this. I don't, I don't care for that gradient whatsoever. Pick like some kind of texture to put in there or just make it one solid color. That'd be totally fine. I also just don't like how dark and shadowy everything is, like the mountains, and the Statue of Liberty, it's just like you can only see half of those things because of the shadow that overlaps. And also like those mountains are supposed to represent the Adirondacks, I believe. The Adirondacks are not that jagged whatsoever. Um, so it just kind of throws me off a little bit. The Empire State text looks a little lame. It's just kind of there. It's not bad, it's just not for me, man. Next up, I've got the Ottawa Titans. This is yet another North of the Border team that we have. We've got this cartoony expression. I love the kind of toothy, uh, granite kind of reminds, it looks like my cat Marty. He has those same kind of fangy things going on. I really don't like all that text down there at the bottom. It's so hard to see, it's very, very small. But I love, I love the skyline of Ottawa. I think that looks sick and he's kind of towering over it. It reminds me of an old logo of the Tokyo Giants, which I'm not mad about in the least. I love the maple leaf tattoo on his arm. Now this is as good a time ever to brag about my new ink that I just got, little cowboy yeehaw hat. 
Actually, I need to put some lotion on that bad boy. But yeah, pretty good stuff. I actually, I like this logo a lot. Next up, I've got the Gateway Grizzlies. This is the team that I'm actually kind of hoping to see here this summer. I want to take a trip to St. Louis. And I know this airport is like right, or excuse me, well, the ballpark is right by the airport. And I really like it. He's super tough and aggressive. I love that his hat kind of mimics the same sort of flow that his head has, if that makes any sense. Kind of got this like wave to it. I like that we don't need to see the team name or location in the logo. Everything just kind of speaks for itself, but I like it. This is really tough and aggressive. Next up, I've got the Windy City Thunderbolts. There's a lot to like and dislike about this logo. I'll start with the positive. Love the skyline. And I love how the T has a Thunderbolt in it to kind of like go with the team name. And the text seems to get a little smaller as it goes towards the bolt. So it's almost like it's wrapping around the baseball in a way, if you can see that. Um, I really like that. It's subtle and, and it's cool. But with the dislikes, I hate the choice for Windy City. The, the font, it's very generic. And for some reason, like Windy is bold, but City is not. It's just weird and it doesn't, it doesn't really line up in that T very well. And the, the stitching being blue is kind of neat because it matches the sort of blue trim on the Thunderbolts logo. But that kind of makes the ball feel more like a softball. Like this just feels like a softball and not a baseball. And it, so I feel like that background, you, you could just get rid of it, honestly. And I feel like this would still hold up strong or just put a different element in the background. Maybe it could be a moon or a cloud or something. I don't know. I just don't like the way that baseball looks. But overall, I like this. Okay, I'm not even going to try and butcher this next team name. I'm just going to call it the Eagles of Three Rivers because that's the exact translation in English. It's obviously very French. This is a city that's halfway between Montreal and Quebec. So, you know, this is like French, the French part of Canada. Very, very cool logo. I love the, the feathers on the eagle, um, like on the back of his head, sort of are in the actual A for the eagles, I guess. I don't know. And he looks very sharp and angular and I like that. I also really like the kind of um, like the way that the, the logo, the font itself kind of like pops out. It's got nice shading to it. Overall, this is very, very clean and I dig it. Trois Rivois, am I saying that correctly? Uh, it seems like a pretty cool city and they got a pretty, pretty sweet little, um, little logo. All of the Canadian logos actually in this league are pretty sweet. Next up, I've got the Sussex County Miners. This looks very similar in, in, to a degree as the Empire State um, logo that we just talked about a little bit ago but this just has a nicer vibe to it. That script looks very clean and nice. It's got little diamonds across the bottom, um, which is kind of cool because a team called the Miners, you know, it's got all the symbolism, the little diamonds on the bottom, the pickaxe, the mountains. This is where those jagged mountains make a little bit more sense to me. It's a very, very cool element, all contained in one piece, black and yellow. Very, very nice. Those colors mean a lot to me. Uh, and I just, I really, really like this overall. This is, this is great. This is a really cool logo design. All right, we've got a special guest VIP appearance here who's going to talk to us about number five. And believe it or not, it is not actually Marty. It is going to be none other than our very own Washington Wild Things bobblehead. So the Washington Wild Things high key have a pretty sick logo. It's pretty simple. It's just a uh, W with the Wild Things face kind of planted right over it. The reason I have this bobblehead is I actually went to a game a few years ago with my buddy Sean. We had a pretty sweet time. Got some pictures of that game that you can uh, you can check out. It's just outside of Pittsburgh. They're actually hosting the Frontier League All-Star game this year, so pretty sick. I was totally trying not to let my bias show uh, with this logo, but I kind of couldn't help myself. This is pretty awesome. It is Marty approved. This is the only bobblehead that I've ever put next to him and tried to take like pictures or uh, video of, and he hasn't absolutely freaked the F out and tried to destroy it. So uh, there's something to be said about that. Marty has officially approved of the Washington Wild things. And so have I, I taught, taught my boy well. <laughs> Cracking into our top five, we've got the Tri-City Valley Cats. Now this team actually used to be a minor league team. Um, but during that 2020 rebrand, this is one of the ones that didn't make the cut to stay in affiliated baseball. So, you know, pour one out for the Valley Cats. That said, they kept their logo and that was a really good choice because this looks fantastic. The Valley Cat script is totally unique. I've never seen anything like it. And it has this nice layered look to it. So that Y, as it crosses over itself, it's layered underneath that C and cat. So there's this really cool textured sort of layered vibe with the actual font and script itself. Big ass arms, just ready to crush one over those hills there. I love that he's sort of popping out of the mountains to kind of tie it all together. He's a cat in a valley, he's popping out of the valley. Looks really cool, love the colors here too. Everything about this is great. Um, it's pretty easy to tell that this was at one point a professional affiliated minor league team because that's a fantastic logo. 
Next up, the Evansville Otters. And actually this team just got a rebrand pretty recently. And this looks really good. It actually has like a modern minor league baseball look to it. Kind of family friendly in the sense that he's tough, but also like super like, cute and kid friendly, made to sell merchandise. And it kind of has this like classic sort of vibe to it with you know the round circular element with the mascot popping out and then the text or the font script overlay. I love the colors too. It's not really, you see a, a nice kind of baby blue and a softer red, but and then like a darker blue. And then that, that it's not really a white, it looks more like a cream trim, um, which is really nice. And the whole thing's tied together really well. I guess the one criticism I have is that the otter himself looks a little like muted, like those browns are kind of undersaturated and he doesn't really pop out in that regard. It's also interesting the way that they've designed his hand. Uh, he doesn't have any unique fingers, so he's just kind of got this mitt for a hand. That's a choice. He just kind of looks like a baby otter in a way. I don't know, he just looks like underdeveloped and not really paid much attention to. So he's not really that tough looking, he's just kind of more cute than anything. I do like the design overall, but it just doesn't have the same fierceness or toughness as some of these other logos that we've seen. It just looks more like catered towards kids, and that's not really a bad thing. You know, I, I see what they were going for, they're trying to do something like a little bit more professional, but it just doesn't, doesn't have the same sort of like edginess or aggressiveness that we're gonna see in some of these other logos, which is a really nice segue into the New York Jackals. A jackal! Jackal! It's a jackal! It looks like a jackal! 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 It's a jackal! Jackal! Time! It wasn't right the first time you said it! Why the hell would it be right the next ten times? Go! This has that edgy, sort of aggressive toughness uh, that, would, that I would want in a logo that looks clean and sharp. It has this beautiful balance of him, his head sort of popping out of the top left and his tail wrapping around the bottom right. It looks so cool. It's cool that he's got his tail holding the baseball. Normally you'd see that in like a hand or a paw. Um, so I like that a lot. Love these colors with that red, white, black, that gray trim, everything looks so nice. The font for Jackals is incredible too, I really like that. A big knock for me though is that we don't need to see the word baseball in the bottom. We see he's carrying a baseball, so we know that this is a baseball team, we don't need the word baseball. And in fact, like looking for this logo, I found different versions of this logo with like a different word in like where it says baseball right there. This one is super egregious to me. I've seen the same version, but it says jackals.com. Like we don't need a website in your logo. That looks terrible. I hope that they don't ever use this for merchandising purposes. I would feel like super jaded if I bought a t-shirt and it had a like an advertisement for the website on the bottom. But what's interesting is on their actual website, you'll find this logo. This is just a screenshot from their from their information page. It says professional baseball. So taking baseball to the, <laughs> the next step, I guess it's just tucking in more words there and cramming professional baseball instead of baseball. I really dislike that the most. It's just it's just too crammed. So I don't know like what they're using for their official on-field logo. I really hope it's this first one that I showed you. I guess this is the lesser of evils. If you're gonna have a word down there, just say baseball. Don't have, don't have professional baseball or jackals.com, it's too much. All right, at number two, I've got the Schomburg Boomers. This is actually a pretty interesting name, especially with like the OK Boomer meme that we have. Uh, Boomer is actually the name for the male species of this specific chicken um, that's like endangered to this area. So that, that makes sense and it adds some context to the name and it's actually a pretty unique name in that regard. But he's super cool. I love his ears popping out. He's got like a baseball diamond in the background with grass coming out of it. I've always said this, but the mascot with the bat or bats in this case over his arm is always a super tough, super clean, cool look. One beautiful elemental piece. This is incredible, very well done. For my number one pick, and this might surprise some people, it even kind of surprised myself as I was like putting these together in a ranking list. I've got the Joliet Slammers. Super cool, very unique logo here. This is modeled after the old state prison there in Joliet, which is a choice. So Slammer, you know, references both like the prison there and also, you know, it, it referenced like baseball, like slamming baseballs, I guess. I love the perspective on this. You've got like a baseball diamond here where those, the walls to the prison kind of make like, I guess what would be like the center field, a center field corner. And the perspective here is such that like, you've got this baseball, which is kind of big in the foreground and you can, see that perspective all sort of point towards like this guard tower with Joliet wrapped around it nicely. And then you've got slammers kind of in front of that. There's a really cool textured 
layered look here. I hope that you can kind of see that and pick up what I'm putting down when I'm talking about that. And then the little details too, like the barbed wire coming out is super fun. The colors here are super nice and like the shading is kind of perfect right where it needs to be. I love this overall. This, this really, really surprised me. The more I look at this more, I'm like, yeah, this is actually really sick given the context to like the team name and that like the location of the team too. Well done, Juliet. Uh, very kind of a surprising dark horse uh, in, in this specific league here. Very cool. Well guys, that's all I got for you today. I've actually got to run out of here pretty soon and head towards the ballpark um, for admissions game tonight. We're playing Frisco. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Both of those items kind of help the algorithm for YouTube. And I just want to be able to like create more content for you guys because this is something I really love to do. So go ahead and leave me a like, give me a comment, uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you again very much for clicking on this. Look forward to hearing back from you and I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you again, guys.